Well, good afternoon, good morning. It's close to afternoon. Uh, Potter's House family, Elder Fred Cantu and my wife Denise, coming at you live from our, our, our broadcast station. <laughs> uh, we're live from our living room. Anyways, hey, we're uh, here to share a word with you. We're here to lift you up, to encourage you, to uh, be a, a blessing to you, and, and just to encourage the masses of, uh, of, you know, of, with the word of God. So, uh, praise be to God. I'm glad I serve Jesus and, and, uh, just have a relationship with him. So let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. We thank you, Father, for this day. Father, the sun is shining and we thank you, Father, that the sun is shining today. And Lord, we, we just come into your presence, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we have ears to hear. Father, and a heart to receive all that you have. Father, as we come into your presence today, let your word go forth and let it not return void. Father, and bless each and every one that hears. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to share a little bit, <clears throat> then I'll turn it over to my wife. But I just want to share with you from uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Um, and this is, um, uh, is uh, the race of faith, is, is that is what it's entitled on the, in the book of Hebrews. I'm going to focus on verse, or chapter 12, verse 1. And then I'm going to jump over to 1 John, chapter 2, 15 and 16. Or 15 through 17. So here we go. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by, a, by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I want to stop right here. Because I know that we focus on that first portion of Hebrews chapter 12 is that we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. But we, as we read on, it says, let us lay aside, let us put off, let us lay off the burden or the weight. Because it says the weight that, that let, uh, I'm sorry, I, I took off my glasses and my eyes are trying to transition. <laughs> <laughs> lay aside every weight. In, this, in the sin which so easily ensnares us. See, God is wanting us, he spoke it through his word, to finish our race, to finish what he's put before us, to continue to press in and to press on. And it says that we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. They're there to encourage us. They're there to cheer us on, that we finish strongly in the race that is set before us. But as believers, we have to, according to this portion of Scripture, according to God's Word, we have to lay aside those weights, mm -hmm. those things that easily ensnare us. And the sin, he didn't say sins, he said the sin. So what's that one thing that trips us up? What's that one thing that causes us to stumble or causes us to fall back? He's saying identify that thing, that sin, that is causing you to stumble, that causing you to fall, and he's telling you, let's lay it aside, let's put it aside, which so easily ensnares us. You know, when we fall, we're, we, we usually are tripped up by, by something or we get entangled in something. And we, we see here, sometimes it's the things that we get ourselves into. Sometimes it's something that we say. And sometimes it's something that we're carrying, that we're feeling the weight of it. See, we're not meant to carry that weight. God is wanting us to shift that weight. See, this where it says here, weight, it's, it's, it's meaning it's a bulk, it's a mass, it's a burden. Something that's weighing on you, something that's holding you down, something that is taking uh, maybe some pressure on you, putting some pressure on you. Well, God is saying that you can move that weight over to him because if we go into the Gospels, he says, cast all of your cares, all of your cares onto him. So we as a body need to shift our weight that we're carrying. If we're carrying, if you're carrying a burden today, 
Know that God is saying, I've set the course before you, that I want you to finish this race strong. Shift that weight over to something else. Shift it off in you. Cast it over to me. Let me carry that for you. He says, you're not alone in this race. Mm -hmm. He says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. But we have to know yeah. that who our identity is and who we can go to. It's not going to be going to, to, to any uh, news source or any type of, uh, of, of, of help, self-help books. It's going to be the word of God that helps us. It's going to be the word of God yes, that is going to, that's going to show us mm -hmm. the things that we have to cast off or the things that we have to shift over. Because then it, he then it says that 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 the sin in the sin that so which so easily ensnares us what can what continually to what is that one thing that continually causes you to get entangled identify that have God shed light on it may it may not feel comfortable and they may not feel. Uh, feel uh, pleasing, but if we truly want to be in the presence and in the servitude of God, we need to have God's light shed on our lives and remove every distraction, remove everything that may, will cause us to stumble and to fall and just uh, deal with that and allow God to root it out of you, let him take it out of you, take it off in you and cast it over to him. Now go with me if you would over to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And it says this, John chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John, excuse me, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, he lo the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but, of the, but is of the world. Verse 17, And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Here we see in this portion of Scripture, God is telling us, don't fall into the, into the love patterns or those desires, or because he's saying, he, I'm a, he's giving you three categories that this that will cause sin. It's the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the and the pride of life. Those three things are are the categories that that sin is is encompassed in. And yes, there's all kinds of sin. There's all kinds. And Jesus was tempted in every way according to these three categories. Now the details of of those that that's you know sin is sin. But it falls within those three categories. Whether what whatever that sin is, it's going to fall in one of those three categories. But here God is saying, don't fall in love. Don't be in love with the world. See, we so get entangled with the things of the world. We're enticed by the world. We're, we're, we're captivated by the world. But see, we're not of this world. Yes, we're in it, but we're not of it. We're of another kingdom. We come from the kingdom of God. We come from his very presence because his spirit dwells within us. He, burnt, he blew his very breath into us that we have the kingdom of God dwelling inside of us. And that kingdom comes forth because we, we remove those passions. We remove those lusts. And how do we deal with them? We give them over to God. When we find ourselves being in, entrapped and entangled, we give it over to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we know that there's something that's been planted that is starting to take root, we come and pluck it out. We say, God, this is not of you. I'm getting rid of it. I don't want any, I don't want mm -hmm. any trees that, are not, that won't bear fruit mm -hmm. in my garden. I only want to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop yeah. right there because I can go on and I'll probably continue this maybe next week. But I'm going to stop right there. But I just want to encourage you. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep pressing on. As we heard in, the, in Hebrews uh, chapter 12, that the, the race that is set before us. Yeah. Let us not be easily ensnared. Yeah. And remember that even in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, God is telling us what, we, how, what will cause us to fall into those traps or into those, into those sins. The pride of life, or the, excuse me, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the three categories mm -hmm. that causes people to sin. Hallelujah. God is a good God, yeah. and he wants to set his people yeah. free. 
But it's going to take you and I being honest with him and allowing him to cleanse us and purge us and have the fire of God come and purge those things out that we're refined as precious gold Mm -hmm. and into the sight of God that we can be vessels of honor in the place of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be blessed today. Be encouraged today. I'm going to turn it over to my wife that she can be a blessing unto us as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good word. Praise the Lord. I just thank the Lord today. Um, I, I praise him for his um, faithfulness. Hallelujah. And um, I know some are um, may not be in a, in a place or a good place, but um, we came to bring the light and life of Jesus Christ, Amen. hallelujah, forth in, in this world. Hallelujah. And I'd like to say that um, um, I, I hear a lot of things that are um, text and taking place. And, and, but I thank the Lord, hallelujah, today that his word stands forever. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the church, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, has their eyes fixed on him, hallelujah, that's where we're established. Our foundation doesn't tremble. Today we shouldn't be um, overwhelmed with oppression or things of the world that we hear mm-hmm. or see with our eyes. But, you know, God, um, I, I was thinking um, this morning as I, I got up and began to get ready, hallelujah, I just um, felt the presence of God and began to speak with the Lord, hallelujah. And, you know, uh, um, it, cha- it our perspective shouldn't be the perspective of the world. Mm-hmm. What we witness on the news, what we witness on television is not um, set in place. The word of God says that it's forever settled in heaven. So it's sanctioned by God in that place. Hallelujah. And when we decree the word, when we speak of the word and do the things Mm -hmm. that God caused us to do, it's established here in the Mm -hmm. earth. You know, we are, I, I sent an encouraging um, text to our prayer, some of our prayer um, people today. And, you know, I was telling them, I don't care what they say on the news. But there was numerous, if thousands, of prophets, apostles, pastors, lay people in Washington, D.C., in that region yesterday. And... And the word of the Lord was being decreed. Mm-hmm. Prayers, were be, prayers were being lifted up before the Lord. Songs were being sung in honor of the Lord Amen. and declaring the Lordship in this country at the place of the leadership. Their feet were standing on the ground and they're declaring the voice of God, the word of God into the atmosphere and establishing it in that place. So to me, this is how, what it seems to me is that who do you think, this is what I posed a question to our prayer group, who do you think had the advantage in that place? The Lord did, his word, his sovereignty was established in that place. How, how long has it been since God's been able to get a group of people Numerous, um, numerous people of, of the body of Christ, the ecclesia in one area and begin to declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what that revival, that end time revival, if we were there to worship, if we were in that place to declare God in that, in that Amen. area, what it must be like. Hallelujah. Amen. It, Saints of God, I tell you, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't look with our eyes and, and, and see the temporal things, but it's the internal things that will live forever. Hallelujah. Yes. And so I just want to encourage you today, hallelujah, that when you walk with the Lord, it will, it, it's not a, a day of gloom. It's not a day of oppression or depression. But it's a day to rejoice in the Lord, hallelujah, because the kingdom of God is being established. It's being reestablished here in America, Mm. hallelujah, hallelujah. It's the perspective, hallelujah. I know some may not not like that, but I just want to read a scripture today. 
And, and because um, when our eyes are fixed on him, we're unmovable, we're unshakable, but we can't look to the left or the right. We must stay focused on God and what he's commissioned. And when Fred was talking about just doing what God has called us to do, hallelujah, we can't allow those distractions to hinder that work, but we must go on, hallelujah. So I felt blessed today that all our brothers and sisters, a, a big majority gathered in that place and began, man, hallelujah, they began to declare the Lordship mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. In Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seed of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We, I praise the Lord today. I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. That, that what he's establishing here. Hallelujah. And you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, I know that we've, um, I've talked here before and, and talked about um, the media, and, and one person said it was like the false prophet sometime declaring confusion, declaring um, things that they only want you to see and, and however um, however you look at it. But if you're a child of God, if you've been a blood bought by, um, by that sacrifice, by a, what, what that new covenant, then you ought not to um, be so easily um, upset with what happened. I would just say like that. Because God um, is on the throne. His word has been established there. Hallelujah. Whether they like it or not, his word has been established. And I'm thankful for the brothers and sisters that made their way there to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, we just want to pray with you today. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just going to go into a, um, a moment of prayer here. Hallelujah. hallelujah so father god we mm -hmm. thank you lord we honor yes, your father. name hallelujah you, we bless thank you Jesus. father we thank you lord you are mm -hmm. sovereign in all that you do hallelujah you, your lord, word Jesus. says that enter his gates with thanksgiving and into mm -hmm. his courts with thank praise you, and we praise you today hallelujah yes, we thank lord. you for the mm -hmm. the strength and in the body of christ oh, we thank you for the stirring you, of the thank holy you, ghost yes, hallelujah lord. The whirlwind of the Holy Spirit yes. going forth. Hallelujah. Yes, we thank Lord. you, Father. Thank hallelujah. You, that you have established our steps. Mm -hmm. We don't sit in the seat of the scornful or listen to, Father, the ungodly. But, but our ears and our hearts are established by your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, today. Thank you, we pray. We, um, we um, rebuke you, all um, oppression and depression. Yes, Those Lord. things that are trying to come. Um, the mm -hmm. disappointment and, and frustration trying to come on the body of Christ. But, Father, we stand with our yeah. eyes fixed on you. Hallelujah. You, and we thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. For the things about to take place, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord, that that um, one million revival, that revival, Lord, that's going to take place, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, we Lord. thank you, Father, in Jesus' you, mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we thank you again. Father, as we bless each and every viewer, Father God, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you that it has gone forth, Father God, and that it will not return void, Father God. We thank you, Father, that what you're doing, Father, that you're stirring your, 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 your children, Father God. You're calling your church to arise, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, Father, as, as you have set the course for us, Lord. And as, Father, as we continue to go forth, Father God, let our eyes be focused on you, Father God. Well, Father, your word says, let us walk by faith and not by sight. Father, I just speak English. Increase in faith, Father, to those yes, that are watching Lord, and those hallelujah. that will be hearing. Father, yes, an Jesus. increase of faith, praise Father God, God, in the mighty name of Arabasi. Jesus, Lord. So, Father, thank we you, thank Lord. you, we praise you, praise and we give name. you the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Wow, what a time. 
<laughs> hey, we uh, like I said, we always want to be a blessing to you in, in uh, just uh, putting out the word out there, putting what God Amen. is doing and stirring in our hearts, mm -hmm. and always want to be an encouragement to you. Let this let this word just be implanted. Let it just continue to resonate. Hope you wrote down some scriptures that you can. If not, you can always play this message back and capture the scriptures that were read. And just study them and let God just begin to reveal to you mm -hmm. what he's saying, what he's doing through his word. So be yeah. blessed today. Be encouraged. Be strengthened in God's might. And we'll see you guys on Sunday at 10 o'clock. God bless you, and we'll see you. Bye-bye.